Welcome to the School of Self-Sustainability. Hi, my name is Alosha Linov and today I'm going to share with you simple projects that you can do around your garden and home that are guaranteed to save you thousands of liters of water that you can now use for your organic vegetable irrigation or flushing of loos. But before we do that, what does self-sustainability mean? It's the ability for your home and garden to look after you and your family by harvesting rain, harnessing sunlight, and growing your own food. One of the places that wastes a lot of water is your kitchen sink. And we can treat this water with a simple grease trap that will filter out the fats and bits and pieces so the water can go safely into your garden. The filtration of your water starts with this simple five rand gadget and all the bits and pieces you take out are excellent material for your compost. Are you ready to make your first eco project? A grease trap for the kitchen. Let's go! You will need a black plastic box. Then you'll need a basket that fits inside the box. One meter, 50 mil white PVC pipe, two T pieces, a female threaded, white PVC joiner, a valve, a 40 mil tank connector and then a 40 mil threaded elbow, a piece of 80% shade cloth, a recycled plastic plate, a drill with a 50 mil circular cutter, 20 mil circular cutter, flat screwdriver, a hacksaw, some fishing gut, black HDPE pipe so you can reach your tree or your garden with the water from the grease trap. The first thing you do is you take a handle off. This will allow you to drill a 50 mil hole as high as possible. Then you drill the hole and make sure to put the drill at a slight angle as it will drive in easier into the plastic. Then you drill the hole on the opposite side, the height of the pen from the floor. you insert the tank connector into the box making sure that the rubber washer is actually placed on the inside and then you lock it up so this box becomes waterproof. Then you screw the female threaded elbow into this tank connector. After that you insert the female white threaded piece onto the tank connector and connect a T piece with another piece of pipe. Cut a piece of shade cloth 5 cm bigger than the bottom of your basket. Use the gut and connect all the four corners and the sides in between to the basket so it spreads it out nicely. Thereafter, you will need to create a plastic plate that fits into the box snug. Place the basket inside the box just after the plastic plate. When you're ready to position your inlet pipes, cut it roughly two centimeters higher than the inlet hole that you've cut out. After you've cut the pipe, you'll have all those burrs. Just run your finger all the way around and remove them easily. After that, you connect your T-piece onto that pipe. At the bottom of the T-piece, you connect a valve with a short piece of pipe and measure up the rest of the pipe that's needed to get that water straight to the drain. Insert your pipe into the inlet of the box and fit it snug into the T-piece. When you do the outlet, run the rest of the pipe towards your garden and now it ends up looking just like this, ready to save you thousands of liters of water every single month. And always remember that you cannot send harsh chemicals down in your garden. So if anybody is using jig or bleach, make sure they turn the valve to on position which will allow the chemicals to go into the drain bypassing your garden. And when you're finished, you just turn the valve back to closed position, which sends the water into the grease trap. So now I've shown you a really easy way to save loads of water. Give it a bash! Welcome back! Now that you've learned how to recycle your kitchen water, we're going to be moving on to much bigger things. Upcycling your bath and shower water with a constructed wetland can save up to 18,000 liters of water every single month for the rest of your life. A constructed wetland. What's that, you may ask? Well, it's a garden in a barrel full of aquatic plants that take the soaps out of the water 
so this wastewater can be used safely for garden irrigation or flushing of loo. All right, let's get started. I'm so excited to be doing this with you. To build a constructed wetland, you'll need the following tools and equipment. A 1,000 liter flow bin, 19 millimeter size washed gravel, a wheelbarrow of sand, which is about five buckets, about 10 buckets of soil. It doesn't have to be any decent soil, just a normal garden soil that you dig out from your garden. It's just perfect because your gray water is gonna add nutrients to your plants and gonna make them thrive. You will also need one meter or 110 millimeter diameter pipe, four boards of about 70 centimeters high by 40 centimeters wide, six buckets of broken bricks or large pebbles. To wrap around your four boards, you will need some plastic, a simple shovel or a spade. You will also need a drill with the same 50 mil attachment that we used in our grease trap. A 20 mil circular drill bit, 70 by 70 centimeter bidum geotextile cloth. The 20 centimeters or so of 50 mil PVC pipe, a female threaded attachment. To start the job, you will cut one beam at a time to at least 60 or 70 centimeters high. Or if you have a big saw, it will make your life much easier. Just remember to use a metal blade. Once the cage is cut, remove it and then proceed by cutting into the drum. I've started by cutting from the top because it's easier to get in and you can continue going all the way around. Alternatively, you can use a standard wooden carpentry saw starting with one corner. Put four boards into the corner of the wetland. Then you'll wrap the plastic around the four boards and dampen two buckets of broken bricks or rocks, put your 110 mil pipe in one of the corners of your wetland. Measure at least five centimeters above the cut drum and cut the pipe at that point. Put the pipe on the floor, lock it with your uh, one foot and drill in at least 15 holes all the way around with your 20 millimeter circular cutter. Take your geotextile bottom cloth and you're gonna wrap it all the way around cutting the bottom of the pipe as well. You'll use some gutter string to tighten it all up together. The bottom cloth will stop the roots from going into the pipe and blocking it up completely. Once that piece is complete, stick it in one of the corners and using your 15 mil circular cutter, cut a hole at least 20 centimeters below the top of the drum. Then you'd go and shovel in some gravel to the same height of the bricks, maybe a bit more. Then you'd add more bricks, more gravel, more bricks, more gravel, more bricks, more gravel, until you reach two centimeters above your outlet horizontal pipe. Put five centimeters of sand. The sand will make sure that the soil does not go into the gravel. Above the sand, you will put at least 10 centimeters of your garden soil all the way around and make sure that you top up the bricks to that height. Smooth the soil all around with your forearm so it's all at the same level. And now you're ready for your aquatic plants. Hey guys, stay tuned because just after the break, we're going to look at the all the aquatic plants that can be used in our constructed wetland to treat this water to perfection. Hey, welcome back. Now we're going to learn about all the aquatic plants that can be used in our constructed wetland. The most important thing to remember is that these plants must love water because their roots are going to be submerged in the gravel. Your aquatic plants need sunlight in order to do all the treatment of the gray water. Therefore, it's very important where you position your wetland. So make sure this wetland gets at least five to six hours of full sunlight every day. On the south side, we want to be putting tall papyruses and all the tall aquatic plants. So they don't shade other plants. And on the northern side, which is the front of your wetland, we'll be using shorter plants such as um, bulrushes and taros, as well as other short grassy looking things that don't cast too much shadow. So you've got this garden that's lower going to the south which is much much taller 
We can even plant a sugar cane that you can munch on when it's grown to its full size. What the plants do is they send out roots in the gravel and these roots that take out the nutrients out of the soapy water. All the soaps and the dead skin particles are what causes the water to smell. So what the plants do, they use the soaps and the skin particles and all the nasties to suck them up so the plants thrive whilst making the water super clean so it can be used in your vegetable garden. So coupled with the root activity that helps to cleaning the water, the gravel and all the cavities in between all the little stones, beneficial microorganisms start living in the cavities and they also bust out all those nasties from the water, keeping it squeaky clean for your further use. Never store grey water in a tank as it will start to smell. Always use it day by day, every day. When the water from your bath drops into the bricks, it will exit through the 10 cm gap at the bottom and then it rises all the way to the top and then we are taking that water from the bottom of our outlet which creates a longer treatment path and cleaner water. I really hope you enjoyed yourself just as much as I did teaching you this beautiful ecological systems.